Welcome to part two of the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Let's start with a quick review of the theorem and then we'll take a look at an additional example. The fundamental theorem of line integrals states that if the vector field f is conservative, meaning it's equal to the gradient of little f, then the line integral between any two points is equal to the difference in the value of the potential function, as we see here, at the ending and beginning point of the curve. So we first have to verify that the given vector field is conservative, and then if it is, and it satisfies the conditions listed here, we then need to determine the potential function, and then we can evaluate the line integral. So let's look at our example. Here we have a vector field in R3, and if we want to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to evaluate this, we first have to check to make sure that this vector field is conservative. Remember, it's conservative if the curl of F is equal to zero. So the first row would be ijk. The second row would be from del, or the partial derivative operator. The third row is from the components of vector field f. So here's our three by three determinant, but to evaluate this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the diagonal method. So I'm gonna copy column one and column two to the right. So we'll add the products of the blue diagonals, and then we'll subtract the products of the green diagonals. So the partial derivative of x squared e to the z with respect to y, that would be zero, plus the partial derivative of two x e to the z with respect to z, that'll give us two x e to the z, plus the partial derivative of cosine y with respect to x, that would be zero, minus the product of the green diagonal. So so here we'll have the partial derivative of two x e to the z with respect to y, that's gonna be zero. Here we'll have the partial derivative of cosine y with respect to z, that's also gonna be zero. And then here we have the partial derivative of x squared e to the z with respect to x, that's gonna be two x e to the z. So the curl is equal to zero which tells us that the vector field is conservative. So now we can use the fundamental thermal line integrals to evaluate this as long as we can determine the potential function. So let's go ahead and do that on the next page. Remember, if the vector field F is conservative, it's equal to the gradient of little f, which tells us that the components of vector field F or equal to the partial of f with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. And so if we can determine the original function f of x, y, z, we can use that to determine the value of this line integral. So I'll have to integrate the x component of vector f with respect to x. We'll have to integrate the y component with respect to y and then integrate the z component with respect to z. Compare the results to determine the potential function. So here we're gonna have two times x squared over two, that'll just be x squared e to the z. But now we're only recovering the x part of the potential function, so our constant of integration could be a function of y and z. Integrating cosine y with respect to y, that's gonna give us sine y, plus the possible function in terms of x and z. Integrating x squared e to the z with respect to z would just give us x squared e to the z, plus a possible function in terms of x and y. Now by comparing these three results, we should be able to come up with the potential function f of x, y, z. Notice the 
Notice that x squared e to the z occurs twice. So we'll only include that once. That'd be x squared e to the z. We also have to include sine y. And then our constant of integration would be plus c. But notice when applying the fundamental thermal line integrals, the c would simplify out. So we won't include it when we use our theorem. Now that we have our potential function, we were given that the curve c is from the point one pi over two zero to the point three pi natural log four, we can determine the value of this line integral. It's gonna be equal to the potential function evaluated at three pi natural log four minus the potential function evaluated at one pi over two and zero. Let's see what we get. We'd have three squared e to the natural log four plus sine of pi minus one squared e to the zero plus sine of pi over two. Well, three squared is equal to nine. E raised to the power of natural log four is equal to four plus the sine of pi is gonna be equal to zero minus one squared is one, e to the zero is one, so we have one plus sine of pi over two is also equal to one. So we have 36 minus two, which gives us 34. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.